What's happening, everybody? On today's show, our coverage from the Senior Bowl continues as we catch up with more former SEC players. Today, we will interview Georgia offensive lineman Justin Schaefer, as well as LSU linebacker Damone Clark. And we'll go around the conference as Bama DC Pete Golding is arrested, some coaching hires at Georgia and Bama, and more insight into Austin Davis's departure at Auburn. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. Great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Blue. Blue. Makes the handoff. Throws inside the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. Greg McElroy, former Alabama quarterback, now SEC ESPN broadcaster. He offered some insight into the Austin Davis situation at Auburn. Appearing on the Paul Feinbaum show yesterday, Greg McElroy said, look, based on what I gathered, Austin Davis was unfit for the position of offensive coordinator and was going to be relieved of his duties if he did not step down. Davis resigned earlier this week, just six weeks after he took the job at Auburn. Coach Brian Harson and Davis both said Monday that, uh, he would be leaving for personal reasons. Davis said he has decided to, quote, step away from coaching football. He said his decision was 100% based on personal reasons. Pretty interesting, though, that uh, Greg McElroy seems to think that he was not ready for that job. Keep in mind, he was a quarterback's coach in the NFL, became an NFL assistant just two years ago after a seven-year NFL career playing for five different teams, mostly as a backup quarterback. So interesting, to say the least, over at Auburn. But more details, I'm sure, will continue to come out. Meanwhile, over at Georgia, they have an opponent at offense, an outside linebacker coach after staff turnover this season. The Bulldogs could be nearing a new hire. On the new staff, according to On3 Sports, the dogs are targeting Chidero Uzo Deribe of TCU for the position. On3 Sports says uh, Uzo Deribe played defensive line for Colorado in college. He's worked at SMU and followed Sonny Dykes to TCU. So we'll see if uh, that is made official as the new outside linebackers coach at Georgia. Meanwhile, Georgia is still celebrating their national championship win and probably going to lead to a big payday for Kirby Smart. Smart is in the midst of a contract that expires at the end of 2024. And then extension signed. Uh, that was an extension that was signed in 2018 with the Bulldogs national championship run behind them. It's looking like Kirby's going to get that big extension. According to athletic director Josh Brooks, he told the Athens Banner Herald, we're in a situation where you got a coach that wants to be here, an administration that wants him to be here. It's just working through the process. Smart's original contract was paying him $3.75 million initially following the Bulldogs' first trip to the national title game in 2017. That jumped up to $7 million a year. His latest extension will certainly see that number go up as well. Fortunate news over at Alabama as defensive coordinator Pete Golding was arrested Thursday morning in Northport, North Port, Alabama on a DUI charge. The Crimson Tide assistant coach faces a hefty fine and other penalties. Thursday morning, his mugshot was released. He did release a statement to AL.com Thursday afternoon. He said, I'm deeply sorry for the actions that led to my arrest. I sincerely apologize to my family, everyone in our organization, our players, Coach Saban, and our fans. Regardless of the outcome, I did not uphold the values I have for myself and values of the Alabama football program. Golding has been with the Tide as the school's D.C. since 2018 and, of course, helped guide the Crimson Tide defense to the 2020 National Championship. Meanwhile, Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide, there are rumors out there he could make a jump back to the NFL. According to Ian Rappaport of NFL.com, 
There is believed to be mutual interest between the Patriots and Bill O'Brien. He has experience working with Bill Belichick, having spent 07 to 2011 on the Patriots staff. Also at Alabama, Nick Saban officially hiring Coleman Hutzler as the new special teams coordinator. Traveris Robinson filling the cornerbacks coach role. And Eric Walford officially taking over as the O-line coach. The school made those hirings official this week. Meanwhile, over at Auburn, they've seen plenty of changes to their staff this offseason. According to On3 Sports, an Auburn analyst will be leaving for a job in the FCS. On3 Sports reporting that Auburn analyst Bodie Reeder is expected to join Northern Iowa as their new offensive coordinator. He has experience as an OC, having served over at Utah State, North Texas, and Eastern Washington before he came over to Auburn. Some good news for spring football. Mississippi State, they released their spring practice schedule, and they announced that their annual spring scrimmage will be held on Saturday, April 16th, with practices starting on March 24th. So if you're a Bulldogs fan, Saturday, April 16th, circle that on your calendar. That's when your Bulldogs uh, will have their spring game. Meanwhile, Ole Miss, they announced their dates. They will kick off spring practice on March 22nd, and they're Grove Bowl spring game will be April 23rd. So that's uh, uh, April 23rd for Ole Miss, April 16th for Mississippi State. Meanwhile, some Ole Miss basketball news. They got some bad news as there was a real point guard, Deshaun Ruffin, uh, suffered a serious injury and will need surgery, thus ending his season. He left uh, Tuesday night's game against LSU, suffering a knee injury in the second half. So Deshaun Ruffin, who's Already experienced some injuries already this season. His year is done for the Rebels. And lastly, over at Alabama, their AD Greg Byrne talking with the media on Thursday shared a plan to replace Coleman Coliseum. He shared the idea with the Alabama System Board of Trustees. The new facility would seat approximately 10,000 people with a cost of $183 million. Some of the sites they're looking at are the uh, parking lot next to Coleman Coliseum or the band practice field. In the change, students would move closer to the court. Burns said student ticket levels would remain in the 2200 range and students would surround three quarters of the floor. So we'll keep an eye on that. And there you have it. That is around the conference. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next. Our interview with Georgia offensive lineman Justin Schaefer coming to you from the Senior Bowl. That is next. Always good to remind you about our friends at Bet Online. They have you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues to march towards the big game coming up in just about a week and a half, BetOnline.net, they remain the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news throughout the year. And it's not just football. Bet Online has up to the minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available throughout this year, 2022. Make it your year at Bet Online. Bet Online is where the game starts. Also, we've been telling you about the incredible app that everyone who buys gas needs to know about, and that is the Get Upside app. Our listeners are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. You just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. When you sign up, use our promo code SCORE. That's going to get you $0.25 per gallon or more on your first fill up. Cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Download the free app. Again, use our code SCORE. Get $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as uh, two to $300 a year in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash gets added right back to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, e-gift card for Amazon, and other brands. You just download the free GetUpside app. Use promo code SCORE. Get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. That is code SCORE on the GetUpside app. Going along here, Locked On SEC. It is Super Week brought to you by Get Upside. And there's no better place to get coverage of the big game than the Locked On NFL podcast. Locked On Bengals and Locked On Rams are in Los Angeles all week covering the big game. 
check them out. All right, we are in Mobile for the Senior Bowl this week, and been catching up with a lot of former SEC players, and it was really a, a fun conversation to catch up with a national champion offensive lineman Justin Schaefer from the Georgia Bulldogs. Here was our conversation with Justin. Run along here, locked on SEC, and a pleasure to be joined by Justin Schaefer, one of the old linemen from the Georgia Bulldogs. What's it been like this week for you, man? Well, it's been a very good way. Just really enjoying the experience and the process because, you know, you never get this uh, experience back. Did you get a break at all? I mean, you guys go win the national championship. You got the parade. You got all the stuff going on. Did you get a break at all in there? Yeah, I got a couple of days off and just got back to the grind. I mean, you you can't you can't take a you can't take a long break just because. But like, I look at it as if I take a, if I take a long break, it might be somebody in the same position as me that's getting better. So he 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 got the hooks on me just because he's still working out and I'm relaxing. Has it soaked in at all yet that you guys won the national championship? I mean, it, it, it had to be surreal this whole season, right? Yeah, it's, it's soaked in a little bit. I still, like, kind of get a little cheers. I, when I go back in my phone, I look at the pictures. It's just like, wow, I won that championship. Take me back to the SEC championship game. Obviously, you know, I talked to so many of you guys after that game who said, man, we were not happy. And we knew we had to respond. We knew the season wasn't over. What was it? What was the mindset after that where you guys kind of had to refocus and say, look, everything we want is still ahead of us? Uh, just just knowing that we still had another opportunity to get back out there. I mean, we knew they was going to be in the college playoff too, so it was just like we got to have that mindset, lock our jaws. No matter who in front of us, we just got to go beat them. Did you feel like late in that game, I mean, man, if we give Stetson time, he's going to make the plays? Yeah, we get. We, I mean, coming in, Alabama game, off, the, off, off of the performance he had, Michigan game, like, we just knew, like, we had confidence in them and just, you know, in the O-line room, we just told him, we gave him time, he's going to make big plays for us. He also had some stud running backs back there. Did you have a favorite running back to block for? No, I love them all just because <laughs> they all going to hit the hole and they, and we all, and the whole offensive line got faith in them. It, in really, the room. it really is crazy. I mean, there were times where you guys, you're getting to that second level to go block and these guys are running past you already. That's, that's our job. We just make them, they, they, they make us look good. We make them look good. What was uh, Coach Kirby Smart like this year? I mean, what what message did he preach to you guys all season and kind of keep you guys focused week in and week out? We have we have four traits that we where we uh, worked on in the summer. We call it connection, effort, toughness, and resilience. We just uh, he always just hopped on us, hopped on those four traits, and it just kept our team together through the thick and thin. Just knowing that those when it, if, it was, if it was hard times, we go back to those four traits: connection, effort, and toughness. What's he like as a coach? I mean, is he a, is he a player's coach? Is he what kind of coach is, is Kirby like in person? Yeah, 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 player coach. He gonna coach you hard. Like Coach Smart really loved the game. He loved the game a lot. He's one of those coaches like that hate losing, just like me. So that's why we always had that great connection, just because we both got that love for the game and we just want to win. Do you feel like the offense really responded this year with, with Top Monk? And I mean, y'all were about as balanced as you could get throwing and passing, right? Yeah, I feel like so we worked on it a lot in the summer, just knowing that we got we had a lot of we had a lot of talent around us on the offense. So just going out there working each and each and every day, just having that confidence in, in everybody from the O line all the way to the quarterback, just knowing that we can go out there and we can we can be special. What was the night celebrating after you guys win? Take me through what. What did you, what was the first thing you did after y'all won? I had to go see my family and just to see them smiling and happy. It really meant a lot to me. Was it was it partying through night? Because it was cold as hell in Indianapolis, right? Uh, we we didn't really have an opportunity to party just because it was so late. So really, everybody just hung out at the hotel. <clears throat> everybody just hung out at the hotel. We all just hung out and just just talked about it and just realized like, wow, we won that championship. Did you get to sip any of uh, Stetson's Pappy Van Winkle? No, I ain't getting something like that. That's expensive bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Did you crack open anything, smoke a cigar, anything like that? No, I ain't, I ain't even really get a chance to uh, get one of the cigars on the field. So I was so in the moment and just still trying to realize that we had just won the next championship. I was just like, just running around happy, just couldn't believe that we had just won the next championship. Okay, well, maybe after the the night of the NFL draft, when you hear your name called, you can open, smoke a cigar, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a have a good time. Yeah. What's it uh what's it like this this week being with one of the guys so close to you in, in Jamari? Just just knowing like we both come in with the same mindset, trying to prove a point, make a name for ourselves, and just really just enjoy the experience and just have fun with 
I saw you guys uh, practicing yesterday. There's a lot of SEC alignment there. Some LSU, some Kentucky, some Tennessee. What's what's it been like going up against those guys that you're, you're kind of familiar with? I mean, we 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 have our talks about the season, but other than that, we just we just like as an offensive line, we know we just got to go out and play because the defensive line not gonna let up regardless of who in front of you. They not gonna let up. Like they like their job is to go out and and do the and beat us just like our job is to go out and beat them. Who stood out to you so far? I saw Big John Ridgeway making some plays out there. Arkansas guy yesterday. Who stood out to you so far? Uh, the, well, Devontae Wild, he he had a great practice. Uh, my cousin, D'Angelo Malone, had a good practice. Jermaine uh, Johnson, that's about it. And uh, Matthews from Alabama. Are you hoping uh, to get in the game next to Jamari and kind of uh, solidify uh, the, some couple Georgia alignment in the game at the same time? Yeah, that would be good just one more time to be able to play right next to each other. What are you hearing from scouts and stuff on what you particularly need to work on? Just like like not trying to be too over aggressive and just being patient and just playing ball. Give me a quick thought on Georgia next season. They're bringing they're losing a lot, but they're bringing back a lot. Stetson's coming back. It's gonna be a lot of pieces. They're gonna be ready to run this back again. Oh yeah, for sure. I got confidence. Just just knowing like that coach, the way Coach Smart developed the young guys and as. As he do, like I feel like it's still got an opportunity because it's still a lot of great talent that, that's on that team. Justin, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. It's Justin Schaefer, Georgia offensive lineman. Great stuff with Justin. When we return, we are going to catch up with LSU linebacker Damone Clark here at the Senior Bowl. It is a new year. That means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or just eating healthier, you want to make sure that you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar. The protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. It makes it easy for you to stick to your resolutions because it tastes so good. You'll want to eat it. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Many of them contain 130 calories, 4 grams sugar, 4 grams net carbs, uh, 17 grams of protein packed in there. You compare that to a candy bar, it usually has like 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs, all the bad stuff in there all the good stuff in a built bar even if you're not a huge fan of working out you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you that way when you enjoy a delicious built bar you can almost count it as a workout go to built.com right now use our promo code locked 15 you'll get 15 percent off your order use our promo code locked 15 at built.com and get 15 percent off Continuing on here, Locked On SEC, coming to you from Mobile, Alabama, with the Senior Bowl. And we've had some great interviews, catching up with a lot of different former SEC players. You just heard from Justin Schaefer, offensive lineman from the Georgia Bulldogs, the national champs. Let's head on down the road to an SEC West opponent as uh, Damone Clark, linebacker from LSU, who led the SEC in tackles for much of the year, was denied the butt kiss award. That went to... Uh, the Georgia Bulldogs, and nonetheless, Damone Clark had a fantastic year for LSU. So here was our conversation with Damone Clark. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC. A pleasure to catch up with this guy, a tackling machine, and Damone Clark from LSU. What's going on, man? Oh, it's good. Nothing much chilling. Man, talk about this season because you, your name, I, I mean, look, the past couple of years at LSU, it was like, man, you know, what if, what if, if he could take that next step, what happened this year where you took that next step and just blew up? Uh, God, God happened. I mean, I, uh, it was a tough uh, year in 2020. Uh, I'm just fortunate enough to run across Coach Baker and uh, Coach Jones. You know, those guys helped me change my game. Uh, was there anything specifically you worked on mechanics-wise or whatever, or spending more time in the film room? I mean, what, what was it that helped you take take that game to the next level? I mean, I just did everything. Like when Coach Baker and Coach Jones got there, I mean, we just hit the reset button and started from scratch. Talk a little bit about what it was like going up against some of that competition. The SEC, we always talk about it is the best talent across the country. But, man, I mean, you're going up against some studs week in and week out, offensive linemen, running backs, receivers, everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, like you said, the SEC is the best of the best. So, I mean, it was smooth. It's a uh, smooth competition each week. You know, that's what you go to the SEC for to play against uh, good players. Talk about this season because it was a little bit of a roller coaster year. But it seemed to, you know, even when it was announced that Coach O wasn't coming back, it seemed like you guys still responded. You got the big win over Florida. Just talk a little bit about the ups and downs of the season for you. I mean, at the end of the day, when things going good, people can easily 
sit there and, and just be happy. But, you know, the true leaders come out when things aren't going good. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we felt for Coach O, but at the end of the day, oh, we still have to go out there and, and compete because, you know, Coach O, he's in the profession that he wanted to be in. We want to go to the NFL. So, at the end of the day, it's still not the end of the world for us. So, we still have to go out there and play. Was it was it almost like, you know, okay, this is happening, but we still got to go play hard for this guy? I mean, at the end of the day, we want you want to win. You know what I'm saying? You don't go in the game thinking you're going to lose. You go in the game giving your all each week. And, I mean, that's what we did. You know, each we, we didn't always come out successful, but one thing I can say, our team fought. Who were some of the other guys, the leaders on your defense that you felt like stepped up this year? Uh, Neil Farrell, uh, Jay Ward, Cordell Flott, Michael Baskerville. Um, even though uh, Andre Anthony was hurt, Andre Anthony still was there supporting us every step of the way. What was that? I mean, look, the, to finish off the season with that win over Texas A&M, I mean, that one just felt – for everybody who was in the building that day said it, it felt like, you know, a playoff game almost. I mean, and it meant a lot to you guys, right? I mean, it did. That was our last time in uh, Tiger Stadium. So we had to go out there and uh, – that's the best fans in the nation, man. So we had to go out there and give them a show. It had to be nice, too, after the COVID year with the limited attendance to have packed Tiger Stadium back this year, right? Oh, yeah, it was, man. Even though the season didn't go as planned, you know, I condone the Tigers, man. Man, they came out there each weekend. They still fought and, and came out there and cheered us on each week. What do you hear from some of your uh, ex-teammates just with the new regime coming in, Brian Kelly coming in? What do you hear from those guys so far? I mean, it's changes, but when I talk to the guys, the guys love it. You know, I know, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a different change, but, you know, uh, they hired Brian Kelly for a reason. He's going to get the job done. What do you think of of the hire? I mean, the guy's been successful everywhere he's been, right? I mean, like you just said, he's pretty successful everywhere he's been. You know, uh, just like y'all eager to see it, I'm eager to see it too. What did you make of uh, the, the dancing videos on Twitter? Oh, welcome to LSU. <laughs> Real quick, what do you specifically want to work on uh, for, for your game this week at the Senior Bowl? What are you trying to get out of this week? I mean, just competing, just the best of the best here. You know, a lot of guys want to be at the Senior Bowl. I'm fortunate enough to be here and compete with some of these great guys, but you know, just keep going, uh, building on the things that, you know, I learned from LSU and just take it to another level. Who, who stay, you know, you guys have only been out here a couple of days so far, but who has stood out in your mind so far? I saw Big John Ridgeway uh, blow Damian Pierce up in the backfield yesterday, but uh, have there been any other guys that stood out to you? Uh, Neil Farrell. That's your guy. It's got to be fun to be here with a fellow LSU Tiger, right? Oh, yeah, I couldn't be here by myself without Neil and uh, Ed Ingram as well. Neil, man, like watching him this year, when he played, he made his impact on the Alabama game specifically. I mean, talk a little bit about what Neil, you think, is going to bring to another team in the next level. I mean, they're getting, a, they're getting a hard worker. I know a lot of people sleep on Neil a lot, but they'll eventually wake up. You turn the film on, you see 18 and 92 there. Well. I mean, as a linebacker, you got him plugging the gap and shutting it down. It makes it a little bit easier for you, right? Oh, I love play, I play off Neil. You know, I, I know one thing. If Neil, you know, we, we talk about it. The first series we go out there, do we do. Go on the sideline, then he tell me what he see, and he tell me, you know, how he gonna play it, and I just play off him. It's a couple more for you. Did you hear, you know, two years ago, you know, there were some critics and stuff talked about, uh, you know, media and all that stuff. Did you pay attention to any of that? Where it was like, oh, Damone Clark, he's out of position here and all that. Did you pay attention to any of that stuff? <laughs> no, I don't pay attention to none of that. I mean, at the end of the day, I go out there on the field and do what I gotta do for my teammates. I mean, you gonna have people. Everybody won't be a coach. I don't worry about that. You know. The only person I got to answer is God. That's the most high. But it's got to be gratifying, at least knowing that stuff was said and responding and having the season you did, right? I mean, like Kojo said, you block out the noise. I blocked out the noise. I, I wouldn't worry about nothing nobody was saying. Like, I, mean, I, had, a, I had a great season this year, thanks thanks to God, you know, and I, I give God all the glory. But at the end of the day, I'm not – I don't sit there and, and go on social media and worry about what other people say about me because, I mean, that's life. People going to say good things about you. People going to say bad things about you. But if you feed into it, they're going to just keep them going, but I don't feed into it. So I just, you know, I let the people say what they say and I do what I do. You're in great shape. There's great food around South Louisiana. What's your favorite food and what have you had to avoid eating to stay in good shape? I mean, anything my mama cooked really, anything in Louisiana. But, you know, I'm out in California right now training, but I'm, I'm eating healthy right now. So, you know, I'm feel like smoothies and kale salads. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, I'm doing a lot of that. Um, shout out to Ron Capretta and uh, Proactive Sports Performance. You know, uh, that guy. That guy is great, great guy, uh, great atmosphere around there, and I'm ready to get back to work. Damone Clark, LSU linebacker, you're my honorary Buckets Award winner, okay? Oh, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> guy got something else in store. Hey, man, best of luck. I appreciate it. Appreciate Damone Clark and appreciate Justin Schaefer for joining us. We'll have a couple more uh, 
interviews coming to you from Mobile. Probably have them on either Monday or Tuesday show moving into next week as we head into this weekend, uh, including conversations with Texas A&M safety Leon O'Neal, Kentucky offensive lineman Darian Kennard, and Ole Miss wide receiver Braylon Sanders. So keep an eye out for those interviews coming your way uh, next week. I am Chris Gordy. You guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the Senior Bowl. Keep an eye on all the SEC guys making an impact. And we'll be back with you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. And thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. You can go make your second listen now. Check out the Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling giving you all the picks you need. Tons of SEC basketball happening this weekend. Let's see who separates themselves after the games on Saturday. Talk to you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend.